Stoke. They have eight in Stoke. Do they really? Go. There you go. Nina, how many eggs? Morning. <laughs> That's a lot of eggs, that, it's isn't a lot, it? Isn't it? Can, yeah. lead to, can lead to issues elsewhere. It can, it can. Let's not go there. Not <laughs> yeah. at this hour, shall we not? I do agree with your story, though, Louise, about people in cities being friendly. Whenever I'm in London, I yeah. try and talk to people and get directions, and people are friendly. It's just a case of opening the conversation, isn't it? You look just like me, Nina. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes they look a bit scared yeah. when you try, but anyway. Um, good morning. Uh, we're talking this morning about debt letters. So this is around consumer credit. That's where you borrow money on credit cards, store cards, overdrafts and loans, or debt on cars or furniture. Now, there are rules in place which regulate how lenders should behave when they're dealing with borrowers. The problem is that these rules are 40 years old and they include a section on what happens if you fall behind on payments. So letters are sent and often they're in block capitals. Look at that really overwhelming, confusing language. And campaigners say that receiving letters like this that appear to be shouting things like apply to the court, contact a solicitor, may send people who are already feeling vulnerable and out of control into a panic. And they were designed to give clear guidance, but often they're having the opposite effect. Now, one charity claims people in problem debt are three times more likely to have considered suicide than people who aren't. So language is crucial when it comes to encouraging people to act. Now, we've been speaking with Steve. He found his finances spiralling out of control after he and his wife lost their jobs. They had to move house with one baby and another on the way. Without really knowing it, I was probably really suffering with my mental health, with severe depression and anxiety. And actually, you know, when the letters come, you, it makes me feel a bit, it makes you feel a bit of a letdown to your family. Like you're not providing for your family and you've got them into the, a situation and, you know, it makes you feel even lower. And, you know, the, the debt letters just kept pushing and pushing um, to the point that there was a time after we'd kind of gone debt free that I just felt I was a complete failure and I'd actually con considered taking my own life. Pleased to say Steve's doing really well now and actually works for a debt charity advising people. Um, today, the government announced that it agrees with campaigners and the laws around the wording of letters will change so that they feel less threatening. The bold lettering will be reduced. Legal terms will be translated into more straightforward language and people will be guided towards debt support services. And those changes will come into force from December. And the hope is that it will help those who are struggling, but also help um, creditors to get their cash back as well. Banks have welcomed the news as well. And we'll be talking with Martin Lewis a bit later on because he's been campaigning for these letters to change for a really long time. And so if you do have any, let um, any letters, if you've got any questions for Martin, That's do get in touch. And we'll we'll send a letter, it might not arrive on time. Yeah, no, no, I don't think it will, yeah. <laughs> Even in block capitals. Well, look, you, you, your uh, email address is on there, so you can ping, ping it to us on there. Very good morning. Welcome back. You're watching Breakfast with Dan and Louise. Now, struggling with debt can be one of the most stressful experiences in life. And now the government has announced it's changing the law to try and ban threatening letters, which can add to that stress. Nina's got up more on this one for us this morning. Morning to you. Yes, I have. Good morning. Good news this morning, I think, for people who've been struggling with that, as, as you were saying, one of the most stressful things you can experience in life. Now, the government has announced that it will change the law to ban threatening letters. Um, so let's have a look at what that means. It's consumer credit where you borrow money on credit cards, store cards, overdrafts and loans. Now, there are rules which regulate how lenders should behave, but those rules have been around for 40 years and they do include a section on what happens if you fall behind on payments. So letters are sent. Have a look at this. They're often in block capitals, loads of confusing legal language and campaigners say that receiving letters like this can feel like we're being shouted at and people who are already feeling vulnerable and out of control may be sent into a panic. Now, one charity claims that people in problem debt are three times more likely to have considered suicide than people who aren't. And so language is crucial when it comes to encouraging people to act. And we've been speaking with Steve. He found his finances spiralling out of control after he and his wife lost their jobs. He had to move out of the house with one baby and another on the way. Without really knowing it, I was probably really suffering with my mental health, with severe depression and anxiety. And actually, you know, when the letters come, you, it makes me feel a bit, it makes you feel a bit of a letdown to your family. Like you're not providing for your family and you've got them into the a situation and, you know, it makes you feel even lower.
and you know the the debt letters just kept pushing and pushing um to the point that there was a time after we'd kind of gone debt free that I just felt I was a complete failure and I actually con considered taking my own life pleased to say that Steve did get his finances in order and now he advises other people who've fallen into debt. Thanks for talking to us, Steve. Now, uh, this morning, the government announced it agrees with campaigners. The wording of the letters must change to be less threatening. That bold lettering will be reduced. Legal terms will be translated into more straightforward language and people will be guided towards debt support services. Now, this is something that the money-saving expert Martin Lewis has been campaigning for for a long time. He joins me now from North London. Uh, lovely to see you, Martin. I know what loads of our audience will be shouting, though. You get yourself into financial debt. You've got to pay the money. It doesn't matter how that letter's worded. Yeah, there's a few things I think it's worth clearing up before we start. Uh, the first thing to say is, is in your intro, you said the government has banned threatening letters. I think we need to be clear. The reason the being threatening letters is the law has mandated firms to use capital letters. It's mandated them to use threatening language. It's mandated them to signpost to solicitors and trading standards, even though that's irrelevant. And it's done that for 40 years. Now, this is actually a campaign by my charity, the Money and Mental Health Policy Institute, with support of many other ca uh, charities and many lenders. And the reason we want to change this is just look at the numbers. In England alone, in one year, 100 thousand people attempt to take their own lives because of debt. 400,000 people consider it. This is absolutely crucial. No one here is saying people shouldn't have letters about debt. There shouldn't be open communication. What we're saying is, with one in four suffering a mental health condition each year, with potentially half those in debt crisis having a mental health condition, because there's a marriage made in hell between mental health issues and debt, that changing the language into a way that's conversational, explanatory and signposts in the right direction, something we should have done years ago. And in fact, you talk about people might say people should pay their debts. Well, Barclays, Monzo, Nationwide, Virgin Media, Capital One, all supported this campaign, as did all the major debt charities, as did all the major mental health charities. There's no argument about this. Lenders don't want to send these letters. They know they're counterproductive. If, you, if someone's got a mental health issue and you scare them into such a stage that they're going to take their own life, you're less likely to ever get the money back. What you want to do is engage with people, help them, keep them in society, keep their finances above water if you possibly can, and then the company is more likely to get its money back. The individual is more likely to be a productive member of society, and that helps the economy too. So the naysayers, if there are any on this, I would poo-poo quite strongly. <laughs> well, we haven't found many, actually. It seems to be universally agreed that if the language is clearer, the creditors are more likely to get their cash back, which is why banks have supported this, as you say. Can we put some questions to you that we've received from viewers this morning? We've had a sure. couple of people who've emailed in <coughs> saying they're receiving threatening letters over debt money they haven't spent. They say they've reported it to the police, they've got a crime reference number, but they're still being threatened by court action. What can they do to clear their names? One of them has said it's really had a detrimental impact on his mental health well I'm sure it has and if you're in that situation and it does happen that people get threatening letters over debts that aren't theirs either due to confusion or due to scams I would go and talk to one of the non-profit debt counseling agencies step change national debt line citizens advice I mean, the, the people there will probably roll their eyes at this, not at you, because this happens quite a lot, that people get letters that they shouldn't. So go and talk to them, and they should see it through. If it's a legitimate company threatening you, once you go through the proof that it's not your debt, it should stop. If it's a scammer, well, then we need to get the, the police involved and Citizens Advice Scam Action involved. Okay. So go and see one of the non-profit debt counselling agencies. And they're easy to find online, aren't they? And Paul's got in touch. He said he got into debt five years ago. It led to a poor credit record. He's cleared his debt now. He's in a good financial position, but his credit record is still affecting his capacity to borrow. What can he do? Is there still that six-year rule on his, on his record? 
Yeah, if you've got a default on your record, it will clear after six years. When it comes to credit scores, time is the great healer. The longer ago the bad stuff is on your credit file, the less of an impact it has, and it does disappear after five years. There isn't anything you can do, and we have to be careful, you know. People what say, on the one hand, people say we want responsible lending. On the other hand, people try and clean up old credit scores. If you've had a debt problem, the reason it goes on your file is so lenders can see it and hopefully will be responsible of well, how much they lend to you and what position they put you in. So we need the system to work, but it will disappear in a year's time, and that will improve things quite substantially for you. So I'm afraid the only answer there is just wait a little bit. OK, Paul, you're going to have to ride that out for the next year. Um, and finally, one from a worried parent. It will sound familiar to many. Her son is out of control with his spending. She's worried he's about to lose his car. She wants to intervene, but in a way that doesn't upset him. What would you say to people who care for someone who's losing control and aren't quite sure what to say? Well, I, I, again, what we talk about in the letters is signposting. I mentioned the non-profit debt counselling agencies, some of which can refer to a special mental health counselling charity if that is an issue uh, that moves on with somebody's debt. So the best thing to do is talk about, as I often do, in all the years I've been doing this, I have never seen a problem of debt that is insolvable. It may not be quick, it may not be easy, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. And the first step is to go and seek help and to start to work it through to stop the borrowing and see what, what is available out there. There's a lot that can take the pressure off an individual. So instead of berating, I would go and suggest that either by himself or you go with him, go to a non-profit debt counselling agency, see what they can do. It could take the pressure off, make life a little bit better. We really have to be to very help. careful about debts in this country. They cause many people such substantial mental health problems. That's why the Money and Mental Health Policy Institute continues to do campaigns like this. But there are places you can go for help, seek help. Absolutely. Thank you, Martin. A good reminder then that no debt is insurmountable in the long term uh, you can take control of it and actually Louise and Dan um, the timing of this is really interesting as we head into the winter we know the predictions are of mass unemployment more people struggling to pay money that they owe so it's really important that the communication the language around paying it back is a bit softer so that people don't feel out of control at a time when they're already vulnerable yeah that was all really good advice from him as well thank you